Have you ever wondered how galaxies die? When intergalactic space stops supplying cold gas, when there are not enough resources to form new stars, that's when an incredibly large-scale collapse occurs and most galaxies disappear without a trace. However, what if you could observe this event? Imagine how something with a mass of one and a half trillion suns begins to attract like a magnet and consume the gas of small galaxies. Gradually, no forces are left to resist the giant monster and a collision occurs. And then the merger. And kabang! Sounds scary, right? But the worst thing is that this event has already happened, and more than once. After all, the giant monster is the Milky Way, and the magnet is gravity. So, who has been swallowed up by the Milky Way? Are there any galaxies that managed to survive? And what will happen when the Milky Way collides with a galaxy larger than itself? <sighs> For the past few years, the Gaia Space Telescope has been scanning the sky, collecting data for the census of the stellar population. What comes out as a result? Scientists predict that the most accurate and large-scale three-dimensional map of our galaxy, with more than a billion stars in it, will be obtained. The third Gaia data catalog was recently published, containing information about almost two billion stars. But during this work, the Gaia telescope received other shocking data. The Milky Way simply cannot be friends with small galaxies in any way. It was shocking. It's known that galaxies often interact with each other throughout their lives. Sometimes they diverge in space, limited only by the gravitational effect on each other, and sometimes they merge into a single object. Our Milky Way is no exception. For billions of years, it has absorbed at least 15 neighboring galaxies. After each collision, it became larger by about 10 million stars. This happens for two reasons. Firstly, the absorbed small star islands add their luminaries to it. Secondly, galaxy collisions are accompanied by intensive processes that accelerate the formation of stars from interstellar gas. As far as we know, 60 dwarf galaxies are orbiting the Milky Way. 12 of them are dim satellite galaxies in the shape of a sphere. They have so few stars, and they're so dim, that the first star found was initially mistaken for a fingerprint in a photo. But there was a time when ghost galaxies did not lack sparkling stars. What happened to them? The Gaia telescope made it clear to us that most of these galaxies acquired new stars when they first crossed the gravitational region of our galaxy. But soon after, they stopped forming stars because the Milky Way left them without gas, dooming them to extinction. One of the earliest and most grandiose cosmic catastrophes was a collision with a galaxy, which astronomers called Kraken in honor of the mythical monster. At that time, the Milky Way was four times less massive, and after their collision, it became larger by at least 13 more globular clusters. They can still be identified. Was it an isolated incident? The answer may surprise you. After all, the same thing happened to the dwarf galaxy in the Dragon. 11 billion years ago, it crossed the Milky Way region for the first time, formed many stars, and that's it. And then a similar story happened to the dwarf galaxy Leo 1. It entered the sphere of our galaxy, and at the same time, new stars flashed near it. Since then, neither the Dragon nor Leo 1 have been creating new stars. They simply don't have the resources for it. Also, in the life of the Milky Way, there was a collision with the Hercules galaxy. The total mass of its stars was about 500 million suns. Such a large collision is a rare phenomenon among spiral galaxies. 
Do you think that a person will ever be able to catch a glimpse of at least one of the neighboring galaxies before they fade away? So far, the main problem is that the universe is just too large. Traveling at the speed of light to the nearest star will take more than four years, and if to the other side of the galaxy, more than a hundred thousand years. What should a fearless space traveler do with this? Even if there was something to go on a visit to another galaxy too, this journey would simply take too much time. But let's dream a little and assume that this is possible. The human body is frozen to absolute zero. The frozen remains are then placed in a thick steel vault to prevent damage from radiation and even mechanical things such as high-speed collisions with dust particles. Then the human body is sent into space, where it travels for 10,000 years with the hope that robots or aliens will unfreeze and revive it. If everything goes well, a person literally wakes up from the dead, understanding that the civilization that sent him no longer exists. It doesn't even make sense for him to send a message to Earth. Hello, I got here, everything is fine. It would take several years for the message to reach Earth, and who even knows if a person would be alive by the time it does? Such a journey is a one-way trip. Would you do that? Although, who knows, perhaps in the near future, scientists will understand how you can travel through wormholes and a trip to another galaxy will take less time. But let's return to modern realities, namely dwarf galaxies, which manage to resist the adverse effects of the Milky Way and continue star formation. Two such galaxies are Fornax and Carina. Maybe these galaxies know some secret, or the gravity of the Milky Way doesn't work on everyone. These galaxies were actually saved because they didn't seek friendship with the Milky Way and kept their distance. Therefore, they managed to keep the interstellar gas inside themselves and continue to form new stars for many billions of years after they crossed the realm of the Milky Way. However, to date, resources have been exhausted in both of them. And what if there's a galaxy out there that managed to survive and there's life in it? Perhaps we'll still be surprised by Gliese 581g, Gliese 876, or Proxima Centauri b. Or it could be new exoplanets similar to the solar system. Theoretically, this is possible because there are more planets than stars in the Milky Way, but scientists don't have enough capacity to catch small planets yet, and such planets are common in the galaxy. The difficulty is that, unlike stars, they do not emit light. In addition, the bright light of a star can hide a planet. It's like trying to see a speck of dust on a switched-on lamp. It's time to think about the Milky Way. What will happen when an even bigger galaxy gets in its way? Will humanity survive? We don't want to scare you, but our Milky Way galaxy is rushing towards the neighboring spiral galaxy, the Andromeda Galaxy. At some point over the next few billion years, our galaxy and Andromeda, the two biggest galaxies of the local group, will collide, which could lead to catastrophic consequences. Several stars will be ejected from the galaxies, others will be destroyed, and some will be absorbed by merging supermassive black holes. At the same time, the beautiful spiral structure of both galaxies will be disrupted, and a new, giant elliptical galaxy will form in their place, which may be called Milkamida or Milkamida. Astronomers have been aware of this impending collision for several years, and by the speed of our galaxy's movements, they concluded that such an outcome is inevitable. But what can you do? This is a natural process. 
When one large galaxy collides with a much smaller one, it will retain its shape in most cases, while the smaller galaxy will be torn apart and become part of the larger galaxy. Astronomers often observe such collisions, and Andromeda is believed to have already collided with at least one galaxy in the distant past. As we already mentioned, our galaxy also had such an experience. Nevertheless, it's not entirely correct to use the word collision, since the highly tenuous interstellar medium in galaxies means that actual collisions of stars or planets are highly improbable. Or we'll get lucky, and Andromeda will pass by. Most likely not. According to the latest data, Andromeda is rapidly approaching us, unlike other galaxies. In 2012, researchers found that the Milky Way and Andromeda are approaching each other at a speed of about 110 kilometers per second. The collision will occur in about 4 billion years. Studies have also shown that M33, also known as the Triangle Galaxy, the third largest galaxy of the local group, will also participate in this process. M33 will most likely become a satellite of Milkamada, and then will merge with it after some time. When galaxies collide, large galaxies absorb smaller ones entirely. But when galaxies are similar in size, like the Milky Way and Andromeda, the collision destroys their structure. Therefore, the Milkamada will eventually become a giant elliptical galaxy without a markedly pronounced spiral structure. The collision will also produce a small number of stars, the hottest and youngest of which will explode as supernovae. And all that will remain are older and colder red stars, whose lifespan is much longer. Even though the Andromeda Galaxy has about a trillion stars and the Milky Way has about 300 billion, the chance of a collision between two stars is negligible due to the vast distances between them. They're more likely to be thrown out of the new galaxy due to the merger of the supermassive black holes currently located in the centers of the Milky Way and Andromeda. The collision of the Milky Way and Andromeda will most likely not have have negative consequences for our system, except for the gradual disappearance of the beautiful starry sky. Are you ready for this? Although fortunately, and maybe unfortunately, you and I will not witness this fantastic process. Take a look at the screenshots that are now on the screen. These are statistics from YouTube. What does this mean? Notice, now 57% of viewers of this channel are watching without a subscription. Therefore, in order not to miss Hubble videos, you just need to click on the red button, which looks like this. It's below this video. The law of the universe is simple. Remember that. After all, each of your subscriptions is very important to me. The more viewers, the more often they watch and like, the faster a new mega-interesting video will come out.